Welcome to Money in the Air, the music podcast about neighboring rights, the royalties you earn from the public performance of your recordings and the business of music in general. Brought to you by IFR, the International Association for Artists and Rights Holders. I'm Andrew, co-founder and chief royalty officer of Royalty. Hi, I'm Gina Deacon. I work for Absolute Rights Management and I work with record labels and artists to ensure we claim the royalty income due to them. I'm Stacey Haber and I'm from Inside Baseball Music Publishing. Welcome back to Money in the Air, the Neighboring Rights Podcast brought to you by IFR, the International Association for Artists and Rights Holders. Today, please can we talk about non-featured performers and the different ways that different countries identify them? They identify what non-featured performers, and let's just be very specific in our definitions of what non-featured performers are. This is to account for session musicians, session vocalists, anybody that is not the featured performer. So if you are the lead singer of the band, then, or you are a band member, you are not a non-featured performer. This is to account for if you played flutes just as a one-time gig with that band and you're not a core member of that band, then you are a non-featured performer in that sense. And they get that information through label copy. They have their own methods of research that is pretty much the official credits that are associated with every single recording that gives that lineup, that session musician lineup of who the non-featured performers are. And the AFM SAG after intellectual distribution fund has a couple different funds that they represent for non-featured performers, essentially. And one of them, their primary one, is their sound recording fund that they get. They receive 5% of all income every single year that SoundExchange receives from non-interactive services such as Pandora, from satellite radio stations, SiriusXM. 5% of everything that they receive, which sound exchange year over year is about a billion dollars, goes to the AFM, which needs to get divvied up into these two buckets. First of which is for session musicians, second of which is for session vocalists. And then they look for these, these credits and, and, met, and, and they allocate the income based off of what they find as uh, the official session musician lineup. Right, okay. And can these session musicians claim recordings at the AFM? Yes, they can definitely claim their recordings at the AFM. So what the AFM does is they take, and I know that we've talked about this before on the podcast, but maybe something to highlight as a refresher. They take about the top 25,000 of that 5% that Sound Exchange is reporting to them every single year, including other sources that they're collecting from. It's not just Sound Exchange. They take that and then whatever the top 25 recording, 25,000 recordings are, rather, they'll take that amount and they'll split it up amongst those recordings. And they'll for each recording, it's on a pro rata basis. So if there's five musicians on a given recording, session musicians, then there, it's every musician is going to get 20% of whatever was matched to that particular recording. If you are one of those session musicians that has 20%, you definitely want to go onto their unclaimed tab within, on their website and search for your name and search for the actual recording. If a recording is very popular, if you know that you were a session musician on a Michael Jackson recording, you definitely want to look to see if there's money for that Michael Jackson recording, because likely there's going to be something unclaimed for you. And then also run a search by your name, your legal name, and any variations of your, of your name that could be out there on your credits uh, to make sure that there's not money sitting on a variation on your name. Those are would be my two recommendations. That's great, thank you. Gina, how does it work in the rest of the world? Let's start with Germany, for example. Germany can pay very well for non-featured artists because it isn't just based on one role. If you're mandated, let's say, for example, with PPL in the UK, and you've mandated them to collect for you worldwide, 
don't just enter one contribution into your claim with them if you performed maybe in three different roles so if you were keyboards if you were backing vocals if you were guitarist then list them all because whilst ppl will only pay one role for session musicians they will pay three in germany netherlands is another one that will do similar as well and if by chance you have account a direct account with Germany or let's say Senna in, in Netherlands, you won't just be able to claim they're going to ask for evidence. So always be prepared to have some sort of backup. And, and that can be something like Discogs even, you know, or or Music or Jacks, or anything that actually lists your contribution. Just grab that screenshot because that's what a representative would do. They would actually have to prove that you do have a contribution on that track and then you can go ahead and make those claims and is it simple enough and straightforward enough around the world for session players to do this themselves there's a lot of admin work to be honest with you to go with every single society and you've got to kind of ask yourself the question is it all the admin work all the paperwork that goes through the numerous claims sending off to every society you are conscious that you've had a contribution on a high caliber track then it could be worth your while talking to a representative, somebody that can do that for you. If you've just got a decent amount of repertoire and, and you want someone, then I suggest you look at a collection society that can mandate you for the world and they will then do that on your behalf. Another thing to mention with this, and I definitely agree with Gina in putting all of the roles that you have because it's different societies have different roles that apply for this situation. With the AFM, it's it's by individual, and the number of indiv individuals have a equal split. But with GBL, as she's mentioned, there's kind of a weightedness to. So if you've performed more instruments, piano, flute, guitar, all of the things, and you're gonna, it's gonna be skewed in your in your favor. The other thing I would mention here is that also look at the way that these allocations. I mean, this is really why a rep would be most beneficial too, because it can get very technical. But as I mentioned, sound exchange is receiving income every single year and overall 5% is mandated to go to the AFM. So if your particular recording is representing a higher percentage of that 5% for whatever reason, going direct with the specific society abroad would be most beneficial because you would get the benefits of say what Gina is saying. Ah, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. And if anyone out there thinks that they would benefit from having a rep, they can write to IFR and we have a list of all the reps around the world and we specify who's a member, who's not a member of IFR. So that could be very helpful. Thanks guys, that clears it up for me. And thank you for listening. Um, hope you have a great week. Remember, it's info at ifr.co.uk. That's info at iafar.co.uk. And don't forget to become a member. Have a good week.